we've talked a lot in this class about process, um, about how to come up with ideas, how to build on ideas, how to structure ideas, um, and even how to um, share ideas and uh, give and receive feedback in a way that allows us to know uh, uh, better ways to guide readers into our ideas. Okay, um, what we haven't focused on as closely yet um, is the, the the process for revision. Okay, so what we want to look at uh, uh, here um, are, uh, is first of all a definition for um, the revision process. Um, as well as as more more concrete or practical steps um, to going about revision, um, you are also going to in this lecture encounter infallible truth. So um, you need to know out the, at the beginning that this is coming uh, and to be ready for it. So uh, however it is you prepare yourself to receive truth, uh, uh, please uh, uh, do so. Okay. So. Uh, let's start quickly by uh, uh, revisiting the writing process. Uh, if you want to have out your notes, kind of look again at what uh, what we've already said and build on those, this might be a good place to pause um, and get that ready. So far, we've defined the process as having a series of steps. Um, we've defined this process, this part of it, pre-writing, um, as, as having two parts. One is, is reading and research, um, and it's here that we get these kinds of inartistic proofs or these kind of concrete factual uh, uh, pieces of evidence uh, um, or observations that come outside of us. But, but we also in pre-writing engage brainstorming which are these artistic proofs that kind of our own using our own critical imaginations to come up with um, other kinds of observations and insights that we can later you know build, use to build up our, our essays. The point for a, for a strong pre-writing process um, is to know that it's in pre-writing the only thing we care about is generating ideas. We don't need to worry about language, um, we don't need to worry about structure, we only want ideas and it's important also to know that these ideas we want them to be interesting to us. If at this point you're worried about it being the correct idea or the idea the professor wants this is where you encounter writer's block. But if you simply give yourself permission at this stage to generate ideas for yourself that, that are interesting, uh, you'll be able to get a lot on the page and move forward. Okay. The next stage we've defined is drafting. And again, the, the purpose of this stage um, is to, to take the ideas we have and start to give them some organization, some development. But in reality, this, this looks like generating a lot of language. And again, it's important to know that at this stage, that is our sole purpose. Just get language on the page. Um, you can't write or work with writing until you have language. Okay. So at this stage, though, it is also important to give yourself that permission. This is language that I enjoy, or this is language that I use, or I speak. Um, if you get stuck at this point with the red squiggly lines, you know, the, the mis spelling mistakes in your language, if you get stuck at this point, uh, because you can't think of the right word at that particular moment, you slow yourself down. And if you do get into a rhythm, you, you are producing lots of language, uh, paragraph after paragraph. If you slow it down because you're thinking, is that the right word? Is this the correct language? Um, you'll again encounter writer's block. So if you have to just bang on the keyboard, if you've got to cuss, if you've got to say ums and ifs and whatevers and some things and its and use to draft, then that's what you have to do. You're writing language for you simply to create that language. The final step of the, revi uh, of the writing process, um, however, uh, we, here we see a, a pretty severe shift. Okay? The purpose here is to shape a product. Okay? And we do that by clarifying the language and by cohering the language. Um, What's important, though, is to know that, that when I say product, I, I mean it in exactly the way you're thinking of it. Uh, you're shaping something here that you're going to trade with someone. You're going to exchange this uh, uh, product for something in return. Uh, in class, you shape an essay to receive a grade. Okay. Um, in real life, you would shape a job application to receive a job. Okay. Um, so what's important to know is that once you get to revision, you are no longer doing uh, 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 this for yourself, you are doing this for a reader. Okay, so if we look at the writing process in this way, what we notice is that 
part of the time you are writing for yourself, another part of the time you are writing for another reader. This is really what makes writing so hard. Uh, it looks like you're spending most of the time writing for you and some of the time for a reader, but really you need to see this as half and half. If not more, you're spending more time in revision than you are uh, writing for yourself. Um, so let me illustrate that point a little differently. Um, if you see a line here between sort of pre-writing and drafting and then revision, you need to, to see this line as, as a, a, a marker suggesting a shift, um, both in content and form, you're needing to shift the writing, but also you need to shift your attitude. In other words, you need to start to see your essay not as you see it and as you like it. You need to see it from the eyes of your reader. And this, of course, is because ultimately your goal in writing is to shape a product to give away to someone else, to get something in return. Okay, So looking at the writing process in this way, what we see is we begin with ideas we like, we build language around those ideas that we like, and then when we start to think of those ideas and language uh, through the eyeballs of our reader, we find a need to perhaps sometimes go backwards to get more ideas, to get more language, to shape that language, and then so on. Okay, so the writing process is, is not a straightforward line, it's this recursive process. And in order to move forward, you have to give yourself permission to write to your interests, but in order to shape that product, you have to suspend what you like in order to privilege what a reader needs. Okay, so that's, that's the core concept of a writing process. That's also the abstract understanding of a process. So let's, let's in addition to this conversation, look at um, some practical steps. Okay, so if you have that kind of understanding, um, but, but, but outline for yourself, when I'm ready to revise, I will do these things. Um, this will ensure that you are looking at the writing through the eyes of your reader and going back and, and kind of getting what you need um, as well. Okay, so the first step, um, in, in any strong writing process is that you have to give yourself time and distance away from your writing. Okay, If you say finish a draft Thursday evening and it's due Friday morning and you sort of are done so you walk away go get some dinner and then come back an hour later and now sit down to revise you will not see this essay the way a reader sees it. Um, your brain is still writing it. So even if you're reading every sentence and there are words missing you won't see them because your creativity is still active. Your brain will put those words in um, even though they're not there. And I don't know why this is, but it's true. Likewise, you won't realize that you haven't fully explained something because you're so close to it. To you, it makes perfect sense. The meaning is obvious. But to someone who sees it afresh, um, they won't see that connection because they haven't spent the time that you have spent with it. So the best thing to do is finish the draft Thursday night um, and uh, 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 give yourself the weekend. Put it away. Put it in a drawer. Do not look at it. Do not do research about it. Give yourself a good three, four days away from this writing so that when you pick it up again, your brain is done writing it and your brain is now ready to read it. And in this way, you can see it the way a reader will see it. Okay? The next step is to, once you do see your writing the way a reader will, um, is to make global changes first. And by global, we mean holistic, or looking at the whole as you look at each piece, or considering the whole as you look at each piece. Okay, So here's a suggested sort of series of steps. Um, this is what I do. I start with by rewriting my thesis statement. I read my thesis statement, and then I consider the text as a whole. And if, if my text goes in different places, things I haven't said before, I change the thesis to better kind of announce that structure. The next thing I do is I rearrange my body paragraphs um, in a way that's going to advance my revised thesis statement. Oftentimes when I first write an essay, I, I compose my best point first because it's the one I'm most excited to write about. But in a draft, what I, what I might find is to start with that best point and then go to my weaker points is less progressive. Okay? So if I take my best paragraph and put it towards the end, I can build up to it. Okay? So consider this sort of overall order of your paragraphs and rearrange them to, to match a logic. Okay? The next thing I'll do is I'll look at the insides of my paragraphs to make sure that that logic is also progressive. Okay? Um, making sure that every paragraph has a single idea, a single claim, 
making sure that I've put in clear supporting evidence, and making sure that I fully explain the connections between um, the claim and the evidence as well as the paragraph to the thesis. The next thing I will do is build in transitions between my paragraphs. And then finally, I'll write or rewrite my introduction, my conclusion, and my title. The reason I do it this way is it's the most efficient. Okay, If I work on transitions first, but then re feel I need to rearrange the paragraph order, I've just wasted time building transitions that I now have to delete. Um, okay, So the point of a strong revision process is to figure out for you not only what it works best, but what's the most efficient. As I say, this is I suggest this to you, this order, because it works for me, but I encourage you to try it, experiment with it, and find out what's the quickest, best way for you. Okay. The third step in a strong revision process is to, after you make global changes, to make local changes. And this means zooming in on the language. Okay. It means, at this point now, sort of giving the finish work the polish. Make the sentence boundaries sound, make the diction precise, and make the format specific to your discipline. In our class, that means MLA. It's only at this point that you start to worry about word choice. If you had the word something in your paragraphs this whole time, it deserved to be there. But now you need to ask yourself, what do I mean by something? What do I mean by you? Okay. Um, the best way to catch these kinds of sort of moments of clarity um, or disclarity is to read your paper out loud. Okay, Because you will hear things differently than you see them. The other strategy to use is to read um, the entire paper backwards, starting with the last sentence, reading it, you know, forward, and then going to the second to last sentence and reading it forward. And if you read out of context in this way, you'll be able to see missing words and typos without getting caught up in the discussion. Okay. All right. So those are the practical steps, the abstract understanding for a writing process. Now we are ready to, I think, encounter infallible truth. But you have to be sure, okay, Remember, truth will change your life. If you are not sure, perhaps it's a good chance right now for you to just pause the video. Perhaps don't watch the ending. Unless you're absolutely sure, I don't know if I would watch any farther. What you ought to do is to create a nice, clean, sort of brand new page for this. This is truth. It deserves space. It deserves kind of prominence. If you are sure you're ready, this is your last chance. All right, here we go. The absolute infallible truth for revision is this. You have to murder your darlings. <laughs> Some of you will be familiar with this phrase. Others, this will be the first time you've encountered it, and it's kind of strange. But just imagine this. You've struggled with a paper. You put it off for a week. You finally sit down. It took a little while, but you got going. Per, you're just cruising along, you have a great body paragraph, thesis statement, second body paragraph, but when you get to your third body paragraph, you start to write this amazing sentence, beautiful, almost poetic imagery, um, and you like it so much that you actually stop writing the paper and you start writing an introduction that will set up this metaphor, and in fact, you spend the rest of the evening and all the next morning, so hours and hours just on this introduction to set up that metaphor. You bring the paper to class, you have somebody read it, they tell you they love your essay, thesis is interesting, support is great, but there's this weird metaphor at the end, and your introduction doesn't seem to have anything to do with the paper, and they think you should change it. That's the hardest thing to do, is to destroy something because someone tells you it doesn't fit. But if you understand this about the writing process, and that what you are actually doing is shaping something for a reader, you have to be willing to destroy the beautiful things that you love about your writing. Because at one point when you're ready to revise, you are no longer writing for yourself. You're writing for a reader. The sooner you can kill the precious things in your writing, the sooner you can make it the product and get in exchange the, the thing you are, are trying to gain. Okay, Whether that be a grade or a job or just praise from a reader. So let this be your new credo as a writer. Murder your darlings. Do so in revision. Okay? And if you're ready, if you understand these concepts, you're ready to go and revise.